and good afternoon. Welcome to This Is Now. We begin with a live look on Kauai's south side, where the conditions right now are beautiful, but that could soon change. That's right. H&N First Alert meteorologist Drew Davis is here. They're tracking potential thunderstorms for the Garden Isle that could bring some flooding. What do we know, Drew? Well, we have declared first alert weather days going into Thursday and Friday. The National Weather Service put out flood watches for the Garden Isle and Mi'ihau as we're going forward. There's a band of moisture that's just off the western half of the state that's going to move over Kauai going into tomorrow. Right now, you can see only first alert weather days up for Kauai. This is Thursday night into Friday. The main impacts, heavy rainfall and the potential for some thunderstorms. This is Friday night into Saturday where we may see some of that rain starting to head eastward. Some of the weather models are a little unsure about how far eastward we may not see much rainfall over here on Oahu going forward. Again, we have flood watches up for Kauai and Niihau for 12 p.m. Thursday all the way until 6 p.m. on Friday. That doesn't include the rest of the entire island chain at all. And giving you a quick look at our future cast, you can see this is Thursday morning, 2 a.m. You start to see rainfall creeping in from the west. That cold front and band of moisture out to our west is going to move incredibly slowly towards Kauai. And we're going to push even further in time. This is Thursday afternoon around 3 p.m. Heavy rainfall coming down. A little bit of rainfall possible for the leeward sides of Oahu. And going even further in time, you see that rainfall and the potential for thunderstorms continue to develop. This is Friday at midnight. So we're going to continue to see that heavy rainfall develop throughout Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening, and get the heaviest going into Friday night, where we'll see the heaviest rainfall going forward. And you see it kind of just hang around Kauai throughout Friday. And then in this weather model, push further westward. The main thing that we're tracking is unstable south winds. All of the southeasterly winds that we've been tracking throughout today and tomorrow will provide a lot of instability in the atmosphere, providing thunderstorm potential near Kauai throughout Thursday and Friday. And some of that rainfall may head eastward Friday night into Saturday. How far eastward, we're still figuring out in our forecast. So you can expect heavy rainfall going forward throughout the next couple of days for Kauai. Those flood watches and first alert weather days um, continuing Thursday into Friday. Keep with us, we're gonna be tracking this system all the way into the weekend. Awesome. Thank you so much. Our Drew Davis here keeping an eye on all the weather. And to our other top story now, after decades of debate, the city has announced its plans to begin removing the Haiku Stairs, also known as the Stairway to Heaven. Now, Nakua Companies was awarded the $2.6 million project. Here's some of what was said at a press conference this morning. There's 664 modules up there. All of them will be removed, except the railings at the landing zones or the, the landing platforms. They will remain intact. It will be um, done by um, connecting the modules with slings and taking a 500D, Hughes 500D helicopter and removing it one by one. And we've got a congested area plan, congested area plan that's been approved by the FAA. And uh, at no time will any of the loads cross traffic. It will fly over the, the H3 tunnel. And, and, and we'll land it in the Omega station where it'll be disseminated from that point on. I started out in the process at a very personal level saying, let's see if we can save the stairs. Let's see if that's the right thing to do. And over the course of months and meeting with all kinds of people and the discovery and the effort we put into it, I can promise you this was not a capricious decision. And we knew at the time that we were making it it would not necessarily be a popular decision with some people, but in reality is we really believe the greater majority feel good about this. Now, back in 2021, the Honolulu City Council voted unanimously to urge the mayor to remove the stairs, which were built in the 1940s, citing safety concerns and impacts to residents in the area. Advocacy group, the Friends of Haiku Stairs, sued the city in August of last year, claiming the city did not adequately consider environmental concerns, but a judge dismissed the case. The group says it's working to appeal that decision. Now we're going to have much more on this story on air and online. And let's go ahead and take a look at some other local stories happening around Hawaii. <laughs> Hawaii. 
The Environmental Protection Agency announced a new rule today to limit harmful chemicals in our drinking water. The agency says the change will prevent thousands of deaths and reduce tens of thousands of serious illnesses. Michael George reports from New York. The EPA announced a new national drinking water standard to protect Americans from toxic chemical pollution. It'll prevent thousands of deaths, reduce tens of thousands of serious illnesses. The new EPA rule requires water systems to monitor, reduce, and report high levels of six of the most common and toxic chemicals known as PFAS or forever chemicals. PFAS are called forever chemicals because no one has been able to measure their half-life in the environment. They don't occur naturally, and so nature has not come up with a way of breaking them down. Exposure to high levels of these chemicals has been linked to cancers, liver and heart issues, and developmental issues for infants and children. You can't smell these chemicals, you can't taste them, you can't see them um, at levels that are dangerous to your health. So that's why these new rules are so important. This is the first ever national legally enforceable drinking water standard. The EPA estimates it'll reduce PFAS exposure for approximately 100 million Americans. There are about 15,000 different types of these human-made chemicals. They're used in everyday products, including food packaging, nonstick cookware, cosmetics, and other personal care products. The EPA estimates 6 to 10 percent of the 66,000 public drinking water systems in the country will likely need to make changes to meet the new standards. Michael George, CBS News. Arizona is now poised to join 17 other states that have already imposed near total bans on abortions since Roe v. Wade was struck down. Democrats and some Republicans are denouncing the Arizona Supreme Court's decision that a 160-year-old abortion ban is now enforceable with no exceptions for rape or incest. Natalie Brand has more from Washington, D.C. Abortion access in Arizona is in limbo after the state's conservative Supreme Court reinstated a 19th century law banning nearly all abortions. While a lower court reviews the law's constitutionality, the state's Democratic governor is blasting the ruling. This is a devastating decision that will have huge consequences. Governor Katie Hobbs is calling on the state legislature to repeal the ban first enacted in 1864 before Arizona even became a state. They could uh, gavel in today and make a motion to repeal this ban, and they should do that. I'm hopeful that they will. The 4-2 decision overrides Arizona's current 15-week ban, and the court warned that all abortions except those necessary to save a woman's life are illegal with doctors facing a two to five year prison sentence. Today's decision should be celebrated and we're very hopeful that voters will recognize that life is a human right. Arizona is a critical battleground in the presidential race. On the campaign trail in Georgia, former President Trump was asked about the ruling. Oh, did Arizona go too far? Yeah, they did and that'll be straightened out. And as you know, it's all about states' rights and it'll be straightened out. On the Democratic side, the Biden campaign boosted ad spending in Arizona within hours of the decision. The vice president will visit Tucson later this week. To stop bans like this, we need a United States Congress that will restore the protections of Roe v. Wade. Back in Arizona, Planned Parenthood says it will continue to provide abortion services up to 15 weeks for a short period of time. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. Hawaii County Police are renewing their request to the public for help in finding a missing Pa'awilo woman. 61-year-old Haunani Trask Gibson was reported missing by her family last November. They say that came over eight months since they last heard from her. Police conducted an extensive search at the time, which included a canine and a helicopter. Gibson is 5 feet 2 inches tall, 156 pounds, with brown hair and brown eyes. If you have any information, you're asked to contact police at 935-3311. One, one. And now H&N investigates a Kona psychologist who's getting to choose his possible punishment for alleged sex crimes against a 14-year-old patient. Our Allison Blair reports on the plea deal that some say is unusual. Ruben Leila was facing up to 20 years in prison without the possibility of probation. Now he'll likely serve a fraction of that. H&N Investigates took Leila's plea agreement to a legal expert who told us while that part's typical, this isn't an average deal. This 
particular plea agreement that I reviewed is very unusual. Legal expert Victor Bakke has practiced law 30 years and says a deal like this is rare. Because it gave the defendant the option to pick and choose which scenario, so to speak, that he wanted to plead under. Last June, Ruben Layla was indicted on four counts of sex assault. Records revealed the victim's family was seeking help from its Kona-based nonprofit, the Loving Service Foundation. The facility was located on a 22-acre compound off Hue Hue Street. It was there the 72-year-old is accused of repeatedly sexually assaulting a 14-year-old patient. Court records show the abuse started in 2019 and continued seven months after the clinical psychologist convinced the boy's parents to let the victim live with him while receiving treatment. According to the nonprofit's website that has since been taken down, the facility specialized in treating children and teens who were dying or suffering from chronic illness. Last month, Layla agreed to a plea deal. According to this court document, he was given two choices. He could plead to two counts of sexual assault in the second degree. But he would have to agree to probation in 18 months as a minimum, and the prosecutors would definitely be asking for the 10 years as a maximum. Or Layla could plead guilty to counts three and four, sexual assault in the third degree. They said he could just take a five-year prison term maximum and he just goes in and then it would be up to the parole board. Bakke says in his experience, the fact he was given a choice between two deals is strange. And when you see this type of charge, um, you always have to be careful that things don't look too unusual because then it looks like somebody's getting a favor or there might be some type of corruption. We asked the Hawaii Island Prosecutor's Office why Layla was given options and how often something like that happens. Prosecuting attorney Keldon Walchin didn't answer the questions, but in a statement disagreed that the offer was unusual, saying in part our office considers the victim's desired outcome, potential harm and trauma and input, especially in serious cases. According to court documents, Layla picked deal number one. He will ask for probation in 18 months. The prosecutor will ask for up to 10 years, and then it'll be up to the judge to decide. H&N investigates made attempts to reach Layla by email and through one of his attorneys to give him an opportunity to provide comment for this story. We have not gotten a response. Layla is scheduled to be sentenced on May 24th. We'll let you know what happens. Allison Blair, Hawaii News Now. Foodland Farm in Lahaina reopened this morning. The grocery store has been closed since the August 8th wildfire. Foodland says it hopes the reopening will bring some sense of normalcy to the people of Lahaina and its employees are looking forward to reuniting with each other and their customers. The 14,000 square foot store located at Lahaina Gateway was largely spared in the disaster but did sustain smoke damage. Foodland Lahaina, which is located on Front Street, remains closed because of the destruction in the area, though the store remains standing. There's no timeline for reopening that location. Inspectors are finding more Hawaii public schools that don't have working fire alarms. According to the Department of Education, that includes 22 schools, mostly on Oahu. Nearly 70 public schools do have systems that are working, but they are 20 years old with no replacement parts to maintain them. It's an example of the problems we have managing our facilities. And the facilities have not been efficiently managed for decades. They assured me that the fire alarm system is being installed right now, a brand new system, and that was definitely reassuring. The DOE says it has a plan to replace all of the systems in the next two years. In the meantime, we're told affected schools have a manual fire watch plan in place. The Honolulu Police Department has a plan to add some space to its Alapai headquarters. A half acre property right next door could solve some problems. Jolani Martinez has more on the price and the potential payoff. HPD is hoping to acquire the vacant Royal State Center along South Baratania Street. It's right next to the main station. And the plan is to store evidence in vehicles here. Vehicles like these, packed into the secure employee lot of HPD's main station. In this H&N report last summer, nearly 80 vehicles in here did not belong to employees, but were evidence in criminal cases. HPD says its storage space for evidence is now about 98% full, so it's been leasing off-site spaces for about $2.5 million a year. 
Buying the nearby property for $8.6 million would eliminate rent payments. And for us taxpayers, that's a good thing. Real estate expert Stephanie Sofo says there are no losers in this deal. The land is owned by the Queen Liliokalani Trust, which provides social services to orphaned and destitute children. So the taxpayer money would ultimately go to a good cause while helping HPD. I mean, you have to see that they have to, they're trying to balance their budgets. If they have the property in their possession, then we know that it's a steady, it's a one-time payment, they renovate it for themselves, and uh, they can stretch out their uh, next 10, 20, 30 years in this property before they have to maybe rebuild it, renovate it. And then it's good for that because we don't have to pay it out to the uh, every year with an escalating uh, rental. This comes as HPD struggles to attract more recruits. The city's offer to pay $25,000 bonuses to new officers is expected to help. The, the largest uh, shortage is in our patrol element or our officers, our sworn officers, but really our communications division, our um, what we used to call dispatchers, now police communications officers, one, two, three, and four, uh, there we're short and we're short in the, the PCOs or uh, police communication officers. A push for more officers and a push for more space. HPD already put its request for the funding in next year's budget. Jelani Martinez, Hawaii News Now. And let's take you live outside one more time to Po'ipu on Kauai's south side. A reminder, some severe weather could be headed their way as soon as tomorrow. Stay with us after this short break. We will have more news and weather. How's it on this Wednesday? Light winds are taking over because of this approaching disturbance. It's pushing away the trade winds. There's not a lot of rain out there, but there are some clouds upstream. So we'll have a few showers uh, today, mainly uh, in the afternoon. Uh, because of light winds, we'll get some pop-up showers. Now, we're more concerned about this juicy disturbance. Expected to move over Kauai by tomorrow. Kauai likely gets some heavy rain. It might be a first alert weather day for Kauai. And then the moisture from that system going to drift down over the rest of the state 
state over the weekend with uh, scattered showers and possible thunderstorms over the weekend. We're talking statewide. So heads up, could be a wet weekend. But those winds will remain rather slow over the weekend as well. They're slow right now. They'll remain under 15 miles an hour through the day. And because of that, it's likely to be fairly dry through the day with clouds building in the afternoon. And that cloud buildup could spawn a few spotty showers, maybe even some spinners. And this is what we'll likely see uh, over the next few days. Although, like I said, with that disturbance coming in, we could see some heavy rainfall over the weekend statewide, especially for Kauai tomorrow. Surf's on the rise. We've got a swell that's peaking today out of the northwest. Not a big swell, but decent. Six to eight feet. And with the light winds, conditions will be good in the morning, slightly onshore and bumpy by the middle of the day. So for the next seven days, uh, heads up. you got to get ready for some wet weather, especially if you're on Kauai, which will likely uh, issue a first alert weather day tomorrow. Uh, scattered showers expected over the next several days, and there could even be, uh, even be some thunderstorms firing up uh, through the weekend. Drier conditions not due back until maybe Tuesday. The women behind the iconic World War II Rosie the Riveter campaign received a Congressional Gold Medal today. Now in their 90s and beyond, about 30 Rosies made their way to the nation's capital for the honor. Natalie Brand takes us there. It's an honor decades in the making. I'm so proud to be able to symbolically accept this medal for all of you. This group of women bonded through their work during World War II, recognized today by congressional leaders for their initiative and patriotism. We felt it was very important work at that time. Dorothy Boggess of Washington, D.C., who turns 107 next month, worked as a typist and correspondence clerk for the Department of Defense. We were answering letters from families who were concerned about their families overseas. Sylvia Tannis of Michigan, just shy of 99, lied about her age during the war to get a job at a Ford plant working on the B-25 bomber. I was putting the, the what was called the de-icer on the B-25, it was all women, I and mean, we didn't know we were Rosies, we were just riveters. <laughs> Ernestine Ween of California, one of the youngest Rosies at 96, labored in agriculture while still in high school. I says, what did I do? And, uh, but I thought, well, I'm out here and I'm working for the war effort, so that's important and I'm sticking it out. What does it mean to get that gold medal? It means I did my country good during the war that I helped somehow. The women also share a bond of having loved ones, husbands and brothers who served. Women particularly hadn't been noticed as much as the men that went to serve. The Rosies say their work on the home front made a difference too. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. Disney is changing its policies for guests with disabilities at Walt Disney World in Florida and Disneyland in California. The Disability Access Service, or DAS, allows guests with disabilities to sign up virtually for rides and wait anywhere in the park instead of having to wait in the physical line the whole time. Previously, guests could register for DAS online in advance or in person at either park. At Disneyland, this will stay the same, but at Disney World, guests can only enroll in DAS with a virtual video meeting starting May 20th. The company is also updating who qualifies for DAS. The new policy states DAS is meant for guests who can't wait in line for an extended period of time due to a developmental disability like autism. And check this out, this limited edition Mauna Loa lay box will be available for purchase at a New York City pop-up with Mana Up. Mauna Loa says it will release a new lay box design every year at Mary Monarch, and this one is only for sale now at the pop-up market and online while supplies last. The designer is longtime lay maker Leilani Kana'awau Huggins. They wanted it to represent Hawaii. They wanted it to represent uh, Mauna Loa on the Big Island. And so the colors for me have always been red, orange, this fiery um, lei of aloha. The Mana Up pop-up market in the Big Apple runs from April 26th to April 28th.
And more good news, a Kahalu'u woman is a finalist in a national contest looking to crown America's ice cream vendor of the year. She needs your votes. Zoe Green is a licensed pharmacist. She also runs a nonprofit. But when she realized there was no ice cream vendor in her community, she became one. She didn't have a truck, but she did have an electric bicycle. So she hooked up a trailer to hold a small freezer and generator. Ice cream giant Good Humor selected Green as one of five finalists for its annual Neighborhood Joy contest. The winner will be determined by a public vote and win a $20,000 grand prize. The deadline to vote is Sunday. You can search for Good Humor's Neighborhood Joy Program page online. We love it. Good luck to her. Yeah. And before we end today, I want to send a really quick mahalo to you to the entire Hi. town of Hilo. Hi. It was such a fun week there at Mary Monarch. We made so many friends uh, and, and Ohana. Everyone really just becomes Ohana there. Uh, uh, Omaho Designs. We also saw Auntie Joni May, who was a local weaver there. And of course, let's not forget our crew there from the Sunrise team to the Noon team. And of course, Corbin, uh, our dedicated cameraman there. Uh, just so many good vibes there in Hilo. Uh, if you have never experienced Mary Monarch, consider going next year because it just gets more and more fun every single year. So here's a heartfelt mahalo to everyone who balaaled with us and talked story with us and especially to the people of Hilo for opening up their town for the amazing Mary Monarch 2024. Aloha everyone.